In this video I'm going to have a look at contours. So contours are those squiggly lines we get on the map, those brown lines that join areas of equal height, um, show us how high the ground is above sea level. And it's really, really useful for us to gain an understanding about contours because if we can look at a 2D map and picture the 3D ground, it's going to help us massively with our navigation. So let's take a closer look. Two very common maps that are used in the mountains in the UK are 1 to 25,000 and 1 to 50,000 scale ordnance survey maps. And on both of these types of maps in the mountains, the contours are 10 metres apart, as can be seen here. Now, useful for us, every fifth line, so every 50 metres apart, they're marked in bold. And those are called index contours and they help us really nicely count in 50 metre intervals up or down a slope. And that's really useful for making our life a bit easier. Now, because we know these contours are always 10 metres apart, that's really handy for us because it helps us identify that when they're close together, that must mean that the land is steep, as is shown here. And when they're further apart, as is shown over here, that must mean the land is flatter. So how do we know if the slope's going up or down? Well, the numbers are really useful to us. So I can see which way the numbers are going. Now these will be upside down to you, but we've got 700, 660, 620, 600, oh, 580, sorry. So I can see that the slope is going down in this direction. Now if I couldn't see those numbers clearly enough, if it was, if it was an area like over here where the numbers aren't so visible, I could look for another clue. So another clue on this side would be the fact that I've got these streams. Now they start from these points here and they run down and find more water further down the slope. So finding where a stream starts helps indicate higher ground and that's something else that we can use that's very helpful. This diagram shows us how contours on a map, so this top picture here, can be interpreted and seen as a 3D shape. So we can see here each of these lines going across corresponds to one of the contours on the map and that shows us the shape of the mountain. And this is the thing that really makes, needs practice to be able to figure out. So here we've got the same section of map as we had before and we've already talked about how to figure out whether the land's going up or down using water and using the numbers on the contour lines. But how do we tell whether we've got a valley or a ridge? Well, I know that this is a ridge here because these V or U shapes, if you imagine those spun round, that's what they look like, point down the slope. And on the other side of things, if we've got V or U shapes that point up the slope, I've got a valley. So V or U shapes in ridges point down the slope V or U shapes in valleys point up the slope. So as long as we know what's up and down, that's going to help us be able to figure out the shapes we're looking at. Sometimes contours can be a little confusing, um, but the main thing is realising that that's the case and that's half the battle. So this shows the same diagram as before, but here, rather than having a flat section like we'd expect, we've actually got an indent now, this isn't shown on the contour interpretation because it's within this 10 metre bracket. So things can happen within that 10 metre range and not be visible on the contour map. And it's really important to recognise that because it helps you stop thinking that you're wrong when actually it's just something that isn't showing up on the map. Contour interpretation isn't easy to begin with, but I promise you it does get much easier with practice. If you're finding it a little tricky at the moment, something to try would be visualising that the tides come in and the new shoreline is where one of the contours is. And this might just give you an idea as to being able to picture the shape of the land if you're thinking of it as a shoreline rather than a contour line. Help you see where the ins and the outs would be. Hopefully you found that useful. If you want to practice your contour interpretation now, there's a link to an exercise in the video description.